Hello students, so this is Brock Skaggs and make this video working a vector problem. And so then at the heart of this problem we're going to be trying to determine the magnitude of a couple vectors. And so the tie-in with kinematics here is we've got a, a four bar linkage. And so we've got all the links of each of the links labeled here. I'm just thinking of the units being in inches. Um, we've got this link here on the far left hand side. I'll say that's the driver. It's currently rotating about point A at 60 RPMs in the counterclockwise direction. And what we've also illustrated there in red are a couple of velocity vectors. And so for this video, since we're just talking about vector arithmetic and the types of problems you'll be solving, you don't really have to worry about the fact that they're velocity vectors. If you want to, just think of them as three generic vectors. And what you know about each vector is shown here on the right hand side with the input data. And so V sub B is the velocity vector of point B. And so we know both the magnitude and direction of it. And so the magnitude you can see is 8 pi inches per second. And direction, it's oriented 30 degrees below what I'll call the negative x-axis. Here I'm assuming the, the usual xy uh, coordinate system with the positive x-axis moving horizontally to the right, uh, positive y being directly vertical and positive y being upward there. And so moving on, we've got the velocity of c. And so that's the velocity at this point right here. Notice here we don't know the magnitude. And so we're just going to represent the magnitude by a variable. Uh, be careful here because there's a difference between when I put the vector hat on and when I leave it off. When I put the vector hat on, I'm talking about the true vector. Uh, it has both the magnitude as well as the direction in the description, whereas when I remove the vector here, I'm just talking about the scalar magnitude of it. And that's directed 37 degrees below the x, negative x-axis. And then we have this relative velocity vector term here. And so that's the velocity of c relative to b. Again, we don't know the magnitude, and so we're just representing it by a variable, v c relative to b without the hat. And it is oriented 80 degrees below the positive x-axis there. And so that's the information we know about each vector. Um, we know one of them completely, and then we know two of them partially. We just know the directions, but not the magnitudes. The other piece of information we have to work this problem with is this vector equation down here below. And so it's saying that the velocity of point C is equal to the velocity of point B plus the velocity of C relative to B. And so at this point, you're thinking, hey, I've got this vector equation that relates to the three vectors. And so we can now go into the work of figuring out what this magnitude v sub c is and what the magnitude of v c relative to b is as well. And so with that, um, I've kind of got planned out three different steps here. Uh, first step, we're going to basically take the vector information from the format it is in right now, and we're going to switch it over to ij notation. Then after we do that for each vector, we're going to get back and look at the vector equation here. Uh, this v sub c is equal to v sub b plus c relative to b here in the, the top right hand corner of the screen. And so what we're going to look at is breaking that down and instead of looking at it as one vector equation, we'll look at it as two regular scalar equations with breaking it down by just looking at the i and j components there. And then we'll solve that system of equations for the unknown magnitudes. And so that's the overall plan. And so Let's get cracking. And so first thing I'll do is I'll just grab some of this information and move it down here. Just so we can see a little bit easier. And so that'll do. And so the first step, take this information from the way it has been provided and get it into IJ notation. And so here we go. First thing I'll just go velocity of B here. And that's going to equal... Um, knowing that it's in the third quadrant, as far as the way it's pointed, it'll be negative i and negative j, and so it'll be negative 8 pi times the cosine of 30 degrees. That'll be the i term, and then it'll be minus 8 pi times the sine of 30 degrees for the j term. And again, on the how I'm creating that is I'm just thinking about this drawing here. Here's my uh, vector v sub b. We're going to have a horizontal component of it. And so this will be my v sub b only looking in the x. I'll also have a vertical component of it. Draw that in green. 
will be V sub B. Just looking at the Y, this forms a nice right angle here. We know this angle here, this is the 30 degrees for that small acute angle. And then I just use my usual trig functions in order to uh, determine the side lengths, if you will, of the two legs of the triangle, which get me to these, uh, these expressions here. And so with that, and we've got V sub B, and we're going to do the same thing for V sub C and V C relative to B. And so here's our velocity of C vector. Uh, this time we don't know the magnitude, and so instead of having 8 pi, we're just going to represent the magnitude with a variable V sub C. And so it's also in the third quadrant as far as where it's pointing, so it'll be two negative values. And so we'll have negative V sub C here times the cosine of 30 degrees. Oops, made a mistake here. Instead of 30 degrees, now our angle is 37 degrees. There we go. And that is in the I direction. And then be minus V sub C times the sine of 37 degrees. In the J direction there. And so, so far so good. Uh, next, repeat the process for the relative velocity term. And so C relative to B. And that's going to be equal to uh, here we have a here we have a arrow pointing in the fourth quadrant, so it's going to be a positive x, a negative y, and so also we don't know the magnitude, so we have it represented as a variable. So we'd have v c relative to b times the cosine of 80 degrees i. And that'll be positive, and then minus v c relative to b times the sine of 80 degrees in the J, which gets us to our solution for step one, if you will. Um, at this point, we've got all of the vectors broken down into IJ notation, which is exactly what we were after. And so now we can move on from this and get into step two, where we're going to be working with that vector equation. And so I'll go ahead and grab the vector equation from above and just bring it down here so we can work with it. And so this is our vector equation. And so one thing we know is that if this relationship is true at the vector level, it's also going to be true at the component level. And by component level, I mean if I write the vector equation just by looking at the i terms, it should be true, and if I write it just by looking at the J terms, that should also be a true statement as well. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We're basically going to break this vector, com vector equation into two equations based off of the scalar components. And so the way I usually do that is I'll just come down here and say, this equation is just going to be looking at the I terms. And so what we do here is we write this same equation, except we only look at the coefficients in front of the unit vector I. And so to start, we've got V sub C. And so the I component is right here from above. You can see it's negative V sub C times the cosine of 37 degrees. I don't need to put the I's in here. And so we can just skip that part and go equals. And then we've got V sub B. And so we've got negative 8 pi times the cosine of 30 degrees is the coefficient in front of I there. And so negative 8 pi times the cosine of 30 degrees there. And then for the relative velocity term, C relative to B, we have this guy right here. So we look at the coefficient in front of I, and it's plus the velocity of C relative to B times the cosine of 80 degrees. And so at this point, we have completed that equation. We've got negative VC times the cosine of 37 degrees is equal to negative 8 pi times the cosine of 30 degrees. Excuse me, that's cosine of 37 degrees there. And plus VC relative to B times the cosine of 80 degrees. And so that looks good. And so now we just go and do the same thing, except we look at the J terms. And so again, we'll just follow the path of the vector equation. So it's negative VC times the sine of 37 degrees. is equal to, we got the velocity of B term, 
Uh, the J term is negative 8 pi times the sine of 30 degrees. And then finally, the C relative to B term, looking at the J coefficient, is negative V C relative to B times the sine of 80 degrees. Just like so. And so again, what we're doing here is we're breaking down that vector equation in, into two equations here based off of the components. The, either looking at the I components or the J components. And so at this point, you take a step back and you look and see what you've created. And this should be a linear system of equations. And so the unknown variables that I have are V sub C, located right here. And then the other unknown that I have is the V sub C relative to B. And notice I don't have the vector hat on these anymore, and so these are just the scalar magnitudes. And so this really should be uh, very familiar to you. It's just solving a regular 2 by 2 linear system of equations. And so at this point, there's lots of ways to solve these. Uh, you could solve it by hand if you wanted to. Uh, for instance, I could uh, take my I equation and solve for V sub C, just isolating it, and then coming up with the expression on the right-hand side, and then I could substitute that expression in for V sub C into the J equation, and then solve for V sub B, at a, or solve for the velocity of C relative to B, uh, this term, and then I could back substitute, um, but I'm not going to do that. Um, here I'm going to use a piece of software called Sage Math Cloud in order to solve this system for me. And so uh, Sage Math Cloud is here, um, I've got the worksheet already set up for me. And so what we'll do is we'll first define a couple variables to represent these scalar magnitudes. And so it's V sub C and V C relative to B. And so I'll just say, hey, I've got some variables. I'll call it V underscore C and V underscore C relative to B. I'm also going to do one other thing. I'm going to define a custom function. And the reason I'm going to define a custom function is because right now all my angle quantities are in degrees, but when I pass an angle into the cosine function or the sine function inside of Sage, it's going to want them to be in radians. And so I need a function to basically flip that for me. And so I'll just hit DEF for define a function name. I'll just call it radians. And then I'm going to say, hey, I'm going to pass this function a piece of information, a variable z, parameter z, if you will, an argument. And then I'm going to return z times pi divided by 180, where you, hopefully you're familiar with multiplying an angle in degrees by pi over 180, um, we'll convert it to radians for us. And so uh, those are two kind of prep steps, if you will, before we start getting into the other parts of the problem. And so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to store these equations in two variables. I'll just call it the I equation and the J equation. And so here what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable, I equation there, IEQN for short, and I'm going to assign it the expression here of this equation. And so here I just start typing my equation, negative V sub C times the cosine of 37 degrees, but here I've got to say the radians value of 37 degrees, so I can call my custom defined function before I go into cosine, and we're going to say that's equal to negative 8 times pi times the cosine of 30 degrees, but again, changing the 30 degrees to radians, plus V C relative to B times the cosine of 80 degrees. And with that, I should have the equation there. And so hitting Shift Enter didn't get any syntax errors, so that's looking good. So we do the same thing for the J side. Um, one thing you might have noticed is there's two different types of equal signs I've got in this line before I move forward. This equal sign is an assignment, so it's going to assign everything to the right to this equation. And this equal sign is the one you'd want to use when you're actually defining the equal sign in this equation that you're typing into. And so negative VC times the sine of the radians of 37 degrees is the first term here. I'm just doing the same thing for the J equation. Got the double equal sign there. And we have negative 8 times pi times the sine of radians of 30 here. And then we'd have minus v underscore cb times the sine of radians of 80 there. Yes. And so at this point, we have entered in all of our equations. We've stored them in variables. Last thing we're going to do is solve this. And so we'll say uh, some variable solution is equal to solve 
here we have solve, open close parentheses, then we put in square brackets the equations we want to solve. And so this will be I E Q N and J E Q N. And then we put a comma, and then it's the variables we want to solve for. So V underscore C, V underscore C, and V underscore C B. And those are the magnitudes we're after. Um, I'm going to do one other thing and say solution underscore dict equals to true, and I'll show the solution. And so um, the option here, solution underscore dict equals true, just is um, how I'm going to get the information out. And so that's looking pretty good. Uh, everything's still in absolute. It's not rounding anything off, but uh, now I've got the V sub C is equal to this, and V C B is equal to this. And so I just need to get that information out of there. And so I'm going to say dict solution for the dictionary solution is equal to solution uh, sub zero to get it out of the list. And then after this, I can say things like print uh, V underscore C plus string, and I'll round the dict solution. And out of the dictionary, I want V underscore C. And I'm going to round that value to two places. And the unit's going to be inches per second there. And so what I'm doing is now I'm getting it to the dictionary. I'm saying I want the VC value out of the dictionary. I'm rounding the value to two places. And then I'm converting that value to a string in order to print it to the output area there. And so VC is roughly 26.51. Uh, VCB, making these little changes here, is roughly 3.44. And so we're in good shape at this point. Um, so if you wanted to, you could then copy and paste, or here I could just, since I'm in OneNote, I wanted to, I could just do something like this and screen capture it and bring it right in here to my, my results here. And so the solution that we'd be after in this problem is that the V sub C vector, that vector has a magnitude of 26.51, roughly inches per second, and V C relative to B has a magnitude of 3.44 inches per second there. And so that solves this problem. We were asked for the magnitudes, and we have found them um, with the help of Sage. Uh, one thing also to note, if these things came out to a negative number, so say this came out to a negative 26.51, what that would mean would be that this direction is off in the terms of its sense. And so instead of putting down into the left, it would point up and to the right. And so you'd basically be 180 degrees off. Uh, same thing with this one here. If you got a negative sign in front of the 3.44, we would know that this velocity vector here, C relative to B, is in the opposite direction. And so it would have the same length of line segment, if you will, but it's just need to be reversed in terms of direction. And so that should finish off this video. Uh, thank you for watching it, and hopefully this helps you in your analysis.